to avoid some of the obvious ones. Yes, Halo on Legendary, or yes, Call of Duty on Veteran. Great stuff, but talked about to death. So let's get started here with number 10. The Ghost Recon series was perfect for ramping up the difficulty. You know, in the old days with the original game, it made a very unique game feel way more fresh. The original 2001 game on Elite made an already challenging game even more difficult. You're managing multiple fire teams and enemies that are sometimes hard to spot and then you can go down really, really quickly. That extra difficulty just made all those mechanics so much more tense. From the originals up until I think kind of Ghost Recon Future Soldier, all of the games featured higher difficulty options that really just kind of completed the experience. Ghost Recon games at that point were built to be tense, slower, accurate, you know, just a bit more realistic shooters. And ratcheting up the difficulty made you really play it the way it was intended, you know? Slow, methodical, thoughtful. You could still headshot enemies no problem, so the game didn't change all the rules, but the stakes were higher. You could die just as easily, if not more easily. So good luck not using cover in this is an absolute necessity. Also, shout out to the original Ghost Recon games. We miss them. Next over at number nine, Perfect Dark. Yes, the 90s, rare developed Nintendo 64 first person shooter. On the harder difficulties, things are obviously just overall tougher. You're gonna die a lot more, of course, and enemies are a bit smarter, and you could actually adjust a lot of this stuff. There were modifiers, if we remember correctly, which is pretty cool. On top of that, though, there are more objectives during levels, meaning you would see and do a bit more by playing through on the harder modes. Rare's other Nintendo 64 FPS, Goldeneye, also did a little bit of this. Uh, it was just the early days of encouraging multiple campaign playthroughs and just general replay value, and it's worth highlighting. Also, it was just a really solid game. I'm really just wondering what the heck they're doing with that new one that they announced and when we're ever actually going to see it. We're probably gonna have to wait a while, so at least we still have the original. Now, next over at number eight, we have Resident Evil 7. The Madhouse difficulty does a little more than just make the game harder. For one, item placement is different. And assuming you're playing Madhouse a few playthroughs after your first one, you know, this might mess up your mental item map that you've made up in your head, you know? There are more antique coins going from 18 to 33, but with more coins comes more things to purchase. Just like with item placement, enemy placement has also been changed. So you'll be in for a few new scares and enemies are just in general, obviously more difficult. Ammo is also more scarce, which makes dealing with more powerful enemies a bit more problematic, you have to be so strategic, so accurate, and so on it. Along with that, Jack Baker is also way faster on Madhouse, so when he shows up, you better run for a safe room as quickly as you can, and just get used to him, because he seems to show up a bit more. And just like with classic Resident Evil, you can't save wherever you want, and you'll have to use blank tapes to save. And checkpoints are just way less frequent, so good luck with that stuff. Now, next over at number seven, we wanted to give props. We wanted to mention something a little bit different here. Guitar Hero and Rock Band. Remember when these games were popping off? Man, that was a great time, especially if you had friends. Now, these types of games had plenty of difficulty modes and it was fun to jump into, but the highest difficulty expert was on another level. I mean, you, you've probably seen the viral videos of people crushing the game on wild difficulties. You know, remember uh, Through the Fire and Flames? Yeah. At the highest difficulty, you're basically hitting every actual note of the instrument in the song in real time and strumming the fastest along with it thanks to that. So it can basically become God tier level stuff to the point where you're almost actually learning an instrument. You know, at that point, maybe you just should. It's also worth noting the other game, the kind of spin-off game, Rocksmith, takes this to the next level, taking these gameplay concepts and translating it over to actually playing on a real guitar. You know, taking at least some of these gameplay concepts and translating it over to playing on a real guitar that you plug into your video game. So the hardest challenge on Rocksmith is really the ultimate level. Congrats, you know how to play guitar now. Next over at number six, The Thief Games. Just an incredibly underrated stealth game franchise from the classic PC days. 1998's Thief The Dark Project had three difficulty modes and the highest one really ramped things up in good stealth gameplay way that really kind of paved the way for the future. You know, more objectives like not killing a soul, 
not getting hit, leaving absolutely zero trace, actually having a certain amount of loot you had to steal, like there was actually a numbered requirement, and changing and altered and new objectives, which is always nice for replayability. But it was important that these games had these different things for different difficulty modes because then we got to see more of that in games like Hitman, where you get scored for prioritizing perfect stealth, leaving no trace, maybe never taking a disguise, not killing anyone. That stuff is really important for stealth game completionists, and thanks to games like Thief, we have that today.